Everybody's going to get their uh, fourth century theology for the day. So you can mark that off your uh, to-do list. I know it's on everybody's. He says, when the Godhead clothes itself in human form, the devil thinks that he sees a uniquely desirable prey. The Godhead in Christ is so hidden that he, the devil, does not notice the danger which threatens him and which under other circumstances he would immediately have avoided. In other words, he doesn't notice that's actually God. He just thinks that's a human he can manipulate. Therefore, he accepts the offered prey as a fish swallows bait on a fish hook, so the devil swallows his prey and is thereby taken captive by the Godhead, hidden under the human nature. So through life passing over into death and the light arising in the darkness, that which is opposed to life and light might be brought to naught. For darkness cannot endure when the light shines, nor can death remain in being where life is active. In other words, once God is swallowed up by death, death is destroyed because the antidote to death has just been swallowed. Think about it. God is the author of life and light, the very source of all light and life. And so if death swallows the source of life, that cancels out death, right? Because you can't have death where there is life. It's kind of like when I was a kid, I hated taking medicine. Anybody, parents, did they have trouble giving their kids the pills and the medicine when they were younger? What did you do? You put it in a little pudding or applesauce, right? Because then they don't realize they're taking medicine. They don't have to taste it. And so I would get the little uh, snack pack chocolate puddings, and my mom would put the medicine in there, and then I would eat the snack pack, and not re- realizing I had just taken the medicine that would cure my illness. Not re- realizing I had just swallowed the antidote. The devil didn't realize by taking Jesus, killing him, bringing him down into death, didn't realize he had just swallowed the antidote, that he had just brought life into death, therefore canceling out death. In the case of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, the white witch doesn't have all the information. She doesn't understand what Lewis calls the deeper magic, that whenever anybody sacrifices himself who is actually innocent, death itself would work backwards. So when the white witch leaves, the stone table in which Aslan is killed is broken in two, and Aslan is resurrected to new life. The white witch didn't have all the information. See, C.S. Lewis is really working with this idea of atonement given by Augustine, by Gregory of Nyssa and Gregory the Great, who is Gregory Nyssa's cousin, in case you were keeping score on your little uh, tab sheet. His name is Gregory Nanzianzis, in case you want to write that down. I don't know. But for those of you not familiar with C.S. Lewis, perhaps another analogy is needed. Anybody ever seen the Star Wars A New Hope? Anybody? Star Wars out there? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan is battling Darth Vader. Vader thinks he has the upper hand in this lightsaber fight, and he can beat his old master, Obi-Wan. See, what Darth Vader doesn't realize, though, he doesn't know what will happen when he strikes Obi-Wan down. Obi-Wan tries to tell him. He says, you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you can imagine. Vader strikes him down. Obi-Wan just kind of disappears. And now Obi-Wan's more powerful than Vader could realize. A resurrected Jesus is more powerful than the devil could realize. A resurrected Jesus is the devil's worst nightmare, showing, proving that death has been defeated. The devil didn't know. You know, retelling the passion in this way in in a trickster's tale does not give you the full picture, but only a part. This view of the atonement doesn't cover all the scripture, all the theology, but it's kind of a new way of flipping the map upside down and maybe getting a different understanding of what's going on. Because sometimes we tend to think of it as just God sending his son to do God's dirty work or God killing off God's son. But this view puts the wholeness of God into the drama, that God was working through things, through the entire process, that God took it on God's self, that it wasn't just somebody had to die and Jesus was going to do it, that he was willing to in order to cancel out the effects of death. Because we are all in this sort of prison, the prison of death, the prison of our sin, the prison of this world. And through this, God frees us. 
The whole point of the resurrection then is to show that the effects of death don't have to hold us down, don't have to chain us up anymore. That liberation is offered. So that's your invitation today to live in the freedom of God. The freedom that life is your goal and your end, not death. The freedom that God is who is in control, not the devil. The freedom that your own sin is not the ultimate end-all, be-all of your life, but God's forgiveness and God's life is. As shown by the fact that Jesus could go down into the prison of death, as 1 Peter says, and still come back who he was to begin with. He was still Jesus, the same guy the disciples knew, the same God from the beginning to the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Next week, we'll talk a little bit more about what it means to be released into this new freedom and why we often find it so difficult that even though we have been set free, our chains are gone, that we still sit in the prison cell, that even though freedom is offered, We kind of like being held captive by sin and death. We'll look at that next week. But for this week, just think a little bit about maybe the Passion Week as a trickster's tale and how like, theology is like a multifaceted gemstone, that scripture is like a multifaceted gemstone, that every time you twist it and look, the light refracts in a new way. And you see that gem in a whole new way. Scripture, theology, the life of God is like that. Every time you just twist and look at it from a new angle, you see a new beauty waiting to be revealed. Let us pray together.